Hello and welcome to another lesson on soundproofing. Today is kind of like a follow-up video to one I did way back in the past of how to soundproof out noisy neighbors, which got a lot of flack because people are like, oh, you're telling me I have to like tear out my drywall. Well, now I'm gonna tell you there is a way that I re learned recently after reading Philip Newell's book, Home Recording Studio Design, where he says you can actually use rebond foam or polyure reconstituted polyurethane foam over your drywall to create a soundproof system. So I'm gonna talk in depth about how to soundproof over existing drywall on your walls, your ceiling, and to soundproof over an existing floor and how you can do this without destroying any of those items by demoing them. You will cover them up so there is that aspect, but hey, this is a way to do it without having to rip out the existing wall, ceiling, and floor that you currently have. All right, before we jump in, I wanna say that I have a free resource for you. This is my soundproofing workshop. It's 45 minutes of in-depth teaching explaining exactly how to go about building a home recording studio in your house or just a soundproof room in general. It'll help with that. So if you're on that journey, just go to soundproofyourstudio.com slash workshop. That's soundproofyourstudio.com slash workshop. All right, let's jump into this lesson on how to soundproof over existing walls, floors, and ceilings. Okay, first thing, as I mentioned in the intro, this idea is from Philip Newell in his book, Recording Studio Design, and I have adapted it with um, the Imperial system and some of the different materials that I would use in the US versus what he uses in Europe. So there is some difference between them, but pretty much this is his ideas. So I just wanted to say that up front. So the first thing I wanna say is that whatever existing walls you're starting with, existing ceiling, existing floors, having mass on them to begin with is gonna help with this process. If you have a really, really thin, flimsy wall, uh, adding this system to it will help for sure. But if you're starting with like a masonry or brick wall, that's gonna be even better. So I wanna say that up front. The next thing I'll say is that in this example, I'm gonna talk about a typical wall maybe in a house. So this would be uh, a two by four structured wall with let's say half inch drywall on it. The first thing I would do is just add another layer of drywall to that existing half inch drywall just to give it some more mass. So take a five eighths inch layer of drywall and add it to your half inch drywall all the way around the room and on the ceiling as well. And that will be the first step. As you can see in this diagram here, we have those first two layers of drywall. Then we have our reconstituted polyurethane foam. Now this is kind of the stuff you see put under carpets. It's got different colors on it. And uh, in the US I found that it's commonly called rebond foam. And I guess maybe in Europe it's called reconstituted polyurethane open cell foam. Um, either way, that's the material we're looking for. And then we're looking for densities at five pounds per cubic foot or 80 kilograms per cubic meter, and that would be 10 centimeters in terms of the width if we're in the metric system. So once we got our rebound foam on there, we're just gonna use contact adhesive, and we're gonna apply that to the 5 8 inch drywall that we already put on the wall. And so that's the way we're gonna adhere everything is using contact adhesive, which is like really strong construction glue. Next, to finish off the system, we're gonna add two more layers of 5 8 inch drywall. So you're probably like, oh, this looks really similar to the double wall system, and you'd be right. What we have is our two layers of drywall on one side, the rebond foam, which acts as our spring, like our air gap in a normal double wall system, and then we have the two layers of 5 8 inch drywall on the other. This creates the mass spring mass system, which is essential for sound isolation or soundproofing. All right, now let's talk about the ceiling design, which is really just the same thing. So for our ceiling, we're gonna take that four inches of rebond foam and we're gonna stick it to the ceiling, existing half inch drywall, and again, put that 5 8 inch drywall layer first. Then we're gonna add the two layers of 5 8 inch drywall, again, attached with contact adhesive to the foam, and that creates your sound isolated ceiling. So our walls and our ceiling structure is the same. Now I'm gonna add one more thing here. You're probably wondering what about outlets, light fixtures, ceiling lights, how do those things penetrate through? And that's a great great question because right as of right now, I'm just like, oh, just glue everything on and cover everything up. But what you're gonna to have to do, and 
any case like this with soundproofing is run your electrical through the drywall. And the best way to do that is with the smallest hole possible. So first I would say is if you can run the wires through the drywall, just a single hole through the wires, and then surface mount any electrical outlets, plugs, light switches, or even lights, that's gonna be your best off option. And it's what professional studios do. A lot of times they'll actually put the electrical boxes, lights, and things like that flush mounted to the acoustic wall, which doesn't need to be airtight and things like that. So that said, that's what I would recommend. If you wanna cut out space in this system for electrical boxes, flush mounted lights, things like that, you still would probably wanna use putty pads around the back of your outlets and light fixtures to make sure that it's airtight and that you have a little bit of a, a seal around there. Now, let's talk about the third uh, thing you can do, which is to soundproof your floor. And the best way to do that is to create a floating floor on top of your existing floor. So like the ceiling and the floor, you're gonna wanna make sure you don't add so much weight that the load on the floor or the ceiling pulls the whole structure down. So if you're doing this, it's a good idea to kind of consult with a, a building engineer or somebody who might know how much load can go on your system. So I'm just gonna say that as an upfront warning uh, if you're venturing down this road. So if you look at this diagram here, you can see that we're using a similar setup. We're gonna be adding the polyurethane reconstituted foam to the floor. So our rebond foam is gonna sit right on top of the floor and we're gonna use a different density. So now we're gonna use 10 pound per cubic foot density of the foam and it's only gonna be one inch thick. And in the metric system, that would be three centimeters at 160 kilograms per meter cubed. Next, we're gonna layer a half inch layer of drywall on top of the foam. That would be 13 millimeters. Then we're gonna take half pound mass loaded vinyl and we're gonna put that on top of the half inch drywall. That would be five kilograms per meter cubed in the metric system. And then we're gonna take another layer of half inch drywall and put that on top of the mass loaded vinyl. And then we're gonna take two layers of three quarter inch plywood. We're going to glue them and screw them together. And they're gonna sit on top of the drywall. And then finally, after that, you're gonna put in your finished floor. This could be a finished wood floor. It could be a engineered wood floor. It could be a laminate floor. You could even use a little underlayment on top of the plywood uh, to give it a little squish and protect with moisture. But that is the system for creating your floor. And what this does essentially is the, the foam is the, again, the air gap. It's the spring. It's allowing the separation so sound can't easily translate uh, through the materials. And then all those layers are acting as mass. And that mass load of vinyl in the middle there is actually acting as a damping layer and helping to reduce vibrations coming through the floor. And then the mass, of course, is pressing down on that foam and simply reflecting sound back down uh, so sound can't travel through the mass as easily. So that is how the whole system works. And in theory, you know, you are kind of ruining your walls in the sense that you're gluing everything to the walls. The floor could technically just be covered in the foam and not be ruined. Um, so you could potentially, you know, take this off one day and sort of have your walls back, but it mainly is a way so that you don't have to demo or destroy a finished room. You could actually just add on to it. So the next thing I wanna say is how well does this isolate? That's probably what you're wondering. Like, does this actually work? So according to Philip Newell, at 70 Hertz, it should isolate down to down 20 dB. So it'll take a sound and drop it down 20 dB at 70 Hertz. And then at two kilohertz, it'll drop down by 50 decibels. Uh, so you'll get a transmission loss of 50 decibels, which is, is good. These are great numbers and this will work in general for most home and office needs. You know, voices, just the natural world, things like that. You won't hear it coming through the walls. Now for home recording studio applications, if you're gonna be doing anything with like a, a deep subwoofer, if you play loud sub subwoofer music uh, a lot, this could not work very well for you. Um, if you're playing drums, you know, probably not a good idea. If you're playing a bass amp live at pretty high volumes, this is not going to work. And if you like to play electric guitar at like a really high volume, then this will also probably not be enough isolation for you. But for most other people, this could still work as a great way to isolate 
a room. And if you think about it, this system can be applied to a lot of situations where you can't easily build the double wall system. So it's another tool in your soundproofing sound isolation toolbox for developing your home recording studio or isolated office or isolated room in your house. So I hope this was helpful. Again, if you like the way I'm teaching, the way I'm talking about soundproofing, definitely check out my free soundproofing workshop. I give away all the goods there. 45 minutes of in-depth teaching you can watch right away. Just go to soundproofyourstudio.com slash workshop. All right. Thanks again so much for watching or listening on our podcast. I really appreciate you all. And I will see you next week with another lesson on room acoustics and soundproofing. Thank you.